Twain once said that when there's a gold rush, it's a good time to be in the pick and shovel business. Today, we look at the rapidly evolving markets in the marijuana green rush in our Canna Business Chronicles. All right, welcome back, everyone. Half past the hour. Time for us to take a look at the Canna Business Chronicles. And today, like we did yesterday, we're going to talk about taxes. And joining us to discuss the issue, we have Pat Oglesby. He's with NewRevenue.org. Pat, welcome back to the show. Glad to have you. Russ, thank you, and uh, I appreciate your show. I was, uh, golly, I didn't know about that Brooklyn guy committing suicide. That's a terrible story. I'm, that's just yeah, it's unfortunate to have to uh, pass these stories along to people, but it's part of the reason why we do what we do, ending this criminal prohibition, so we can, you know, really save lives. It's not the marijuana that kills people; it's the prohibition that does. Well, I appreciate your thoughtful approach to the issues. And thanks so much, Pat. Uh, now, and thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's great to have you here. Now, you're with uh, you're out of uh, North Carolina. Tell folks about the organization that you're uh, working with there. Well, it's a, it's a tax policy organization and looking at, at various tax issues and and in particular at at marijuana taxes and whether it should be taxed and how much and how um, you know, what whether it should be weight or price or potency or square feet or and then what what would be what are what are the mistakes that that people can make at the at the you know writing laws at, at um, trying to help folks uh, just think about what kind of what kind of tax laws make sense well so far what we've gotten in Washington and Colorado the tax laws that have been enacted are sales and excise taxes based on the price of marijuana what are some of the pros and cons of doing taxation by price price is very easy you don't have to set up any mechanism to do it um, price is I mean, it, it can, I mean, folks that want to tax potency, they say, well, price is a better proxy for potency because if you buy potent product, the price is high. So that will reflect it. And then the weight base, if you tax by the ounce, that that just gives an incentive to producers to make extra potent stuff so that it, it makes, it pushes the market in this um, strange and distortive way. But the, on, on the other side, the, the reasons not to tax by price are that, that price fluctuates. I mean, it fluctuates with the, with the price of the product. So what you, what you may have is that over time, um, as, as the pre-tax price goes down, the tax goes down too. And that, that may not be what you want. Let me, let me tell us, this reminds me of a story of these, these two friends who disagreed vehemently. They said, how, how are we going to resolve our dispute? And they said, well, let's go see the person in our community, who, who a, a wise and just person, and, and their community, it's, it's the rabbi. They said, let's go see the rabbi. So the first person goes to see the rabbi, and the summary of, of this person's view is, too high, and the rabbi listens to this person's story and says, you're right. The first person goes away, second friend comes in and tells her story, and rabbi listens and says, her story is, summarizes, is, is too low, and the rabbi listens and says, you're right. Now, the wife of the rabbi was behind the curtain all this time, and she comes, in, she comes out and said, wait a minute, you... These two friends disagreed completely, and you told each of them, you are right. How can that be? And the rabbi said, you're right. But the first person said that marijuana taxes are going to be too high. And, that, and at first, what you're seeing in Colorado and Washington is that the black market is still strong, and the legal market is having a hard time competing that they've got not only the taxes but the regulations and, and getting up to speed and doing everything just right. So the black market is offering a lower price, and the, and it's it's hard. The supplies are short. Companies are not, um, you know, new license, new licenses are, are being issued all the time, and, and short supply means high prices, and add taxes on top of that, and it's a problem for the legal market. But then later on... As prices come, as as costs come down in the legal market, legal market's going to get more efficient. They're going to move out the learning curve and develop economies of scale, and the pre-tax price, their costs are going to go down, so the price will go down. 
And then you say, well, what's wrong with low prices? And there, some of your listeners will not be bothered at all by low <laughs> prices. But let me just make a political point, and that is that ultra-low prices to the consumer have the, may have the effect of, of a federal backlash. That, that, that's the kind of thing that could cause the, what, some of the eight points of the Holder Memo to be violated. Then you've got a, a, a political problem beyond that. Of the, you know, does, that, does it get so cheap that the mothers of the jurisdiction start saying, wait a minute, this is, this is, too, this is too cheap? And I, we're, we, the, is there a political backlash? Hmm. That's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> and I haven't even, I haven't, Russ, and I haven't even gotten to the, to the real question, which is the, the a percentage of price exacerbates the, the, over time, the problem of prices. It's got, if you have a percentage of price tax base, well, taxes are too high when you want them to be low at first and too low. Later on, when it doesn't matter so much, you know, uh, make any sense? Yeah, I, I I follow you, and you know, when I had seen these taxation schemes in Colorado and Washington, when I think of a, a marijuana tax based on price, that would seem to me to influence the government to want to keep the price high. I, I'd rather bring in ten percent of a two hundred dollar ounce than ten percent of a twenty dollar ounce. And in the case of uh, Oregon and uh, in Alaska, taxing by weight, 35 bucks an ounce in Oregon, 50 bucks an ounce in Alaska, that would seem to me to motivate the government to want to move product because it doesn't matter what the ounce costs. The more ounces you move, the more tax revenue comes in. I hear you. Is there validity to There's that? There's certainly ways for, for government to influence that by regulations and so on. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, we also have uh, at the federal level, a bill was just proposed by my congressman, Representative Earl Blumenauer, and it's kind of a package deal, I think, where, you know, they're saying let's tax and regulate marijuana like alcohol. So Jared Polis put the regulate part in and Earl Blumenauer put the tax part in and his tax is calling for a 10 percent federal excise tax that would raise to 25 percent as marijuana legal markets began displacing illegal markets. I wonder if that's too high a tax that might continue to empower these illegal markets. Wow. The, you know, in terms of, of what the market will bear, that is a great question. And, and I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, that's going to be just on the ground what the market will bear, what consumers will, will um, be willing to pay. And you, you figure, well, the consumer will pay more for something that's in a nice package and been tested and so on, and maybe that's true, or maybe the consumer will, will remain loyal to the historic dealer that's been helping him all, all along, so it's not completely clear. But probably the, um, the, the tax product will, will, will bear – people pay a little bit more for that. Um, so I, I, I think that it's a good idea – I mean, I don't, I don't know what the final answer is. But I do like Mr. Blumenauer's approach of having a phase-in of the tax. And I think that – I mean, this is, this is the low tax at first. Let it be high later on, but let, let the industry have a running start with this low tax. So I approve of that. But the same kind of thing has just been introduced in Massachusetts by Representative Rogers and 12 – he's got 11 co-sponsors in the Massachusetts House where he, he goes by weight, and it's $10 an ounce the first year, $20 an ounce the second year, $35 the third year, and then – and this is Bud again, but fifty dollars an ounce thereafter and indexed. So it's it's the concept. I think it's a useful concept of letting the of phasing in the rate and and starting out low. Yeah, it it seems to me that we might be in a situation where uh, you know I've heard people banding about these ideas of fifty percent excise taxes. So maybe we're in a situation yeah. where ten percent is the yeah, best Mr. offer we get, Mr. Blumenauer. Mr. Blumen, I had that, um, I think in 2013, his bill was 50%. And so this is a, this replaces that with a much lower final rate and a, and a phase in too. Now, uh, is there, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, other possibilities for taxing. We talked about, uh, by price and by weight. Is anybody really going forth with taxation by potency or square footage at this point? Well, the, Mass the Massachusetts bill, and Dick Evans is, is you may know Dick, has, was, was doing a lot of the thinking behind that. 
does have a potency tax for concentrates. So that Massachusetts bill taxes bud by the ounce and concentrates by grams of THC. And the thinking there is that we can actually measure THC in a, in a liquid. You know, you stick your eyedropper into the vat and pull it out, and everybody says, yeah, this is, this is like alcohol. We, we know with liquor what the proof content is, and the federal government taxes it. They tax 100% 100-proof liquor more than 80-proof liquor. And the thinking is that, okay, for concentrates, you can do that. Now, you have to get it at the liquid stage before it's incorporated into edibles or anything. For bud, the thinking is that no, well, any green plant matter. Now, I mean, it's it's gameable that, that somebody can, an expert's going to be able to go in there and it's like a real estate appraiser. What number do you want? That it's not, that it's not, people won't really agree. And that's why we don't tax, let me say, cigarettes by tar and nicotine content. Because you look at a cigarette, it's not fungible, it's not homogeneous, so... People are going to fuss about it. And I think one thing to keep in mind as this industry starts out, that it's probably going to be in the interest of the industry to have clear rules that don't involve a lot of disputes and, even though I'm a lawyer, litigation. And that if you can, if everybody can agree, then that's a system that people can live with. Another thing wrong with price is that there are a lot of games people play with price. You were talking about price and weight. And one of them is bundling. You know, here's a um, $30 bong and free eighth of marijuana. Well, no tax on that. You know, that's the argument. That doesn't hold up. But people want to want to play that game. They want to disguise the price. You know, here's the bus tour. The bus tour is $50, and marijuana is not sold, so you don't have to pay tax on it. That's a That's a gimmick that does, you know. That's litigation. So I'd, I'd say keep it clear so people know what what the rules are. Well, Pat Oglesby from NewRevenue.org, I want to thank you for joining us again and kind of shedding some light on these tax issues. I know uh, most people aren't too deep into this stuff, and it's really helpful to get an expert to tell us uh, what's going on with this, to give us our options as we move forward on voting for these things. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Russ. Thank you. All right. Keep Stay up t- good work. Thank you very much. Stay tuned, folks. we got a radical rant coming up on the arrogance of politicians who just refuse to accept the will of the people that marijuana ought to be legal. Coming back right after this. The voice of the Marijuana Nation. 420 Radio.